One of the most overlooked skills needed to build a sustainable business is the ability to set healthy boundaries. I came across a great quote by Henry Cloud recently that said, boundaries are basically about providing structure and structure is essential in building anything that thrives. And I know we all want our businesses to fall into the thriving category. So today we're gonna to talk about how to establish healthy boundaries and also how to uphold them well in our businesses. I'm Carrie, and I'm a business operations specialist. I help six and seven figure entrepreneurs build simple and sustainable businesses by establishing a solid operational foundation. If you're looking to grow and scale your business, please hit subscribe below for more tips and tricks to get you headed in the right direction. If you struggle with setting boundaries, it's really important to remember that it's not selfish to set them. If anything, it actually enables you to serve your clients at a higher and more consistent level over a longer period of time. It means that you're not going to get burnt out. It means you're going to appreciate your client and your customer relationships, and you're not going to resent them because they're pushing up against boundaries that you don't want being pushed up against. One of the other really interesting things that happens when we establish boundaries is it actually really cements you as an expert in your area. Your clients will feel safe and taken care of knowing that you are in control of what you're doing and what is happening in your client relationship, and there's a great deal of safety and comfort that comes where they know that they can rely on you to take care of what it is that you promised to do. So in order for you to set healthy boundaries that will enable you to run a business that you love for an extended period of time, there's three important steps to consider. The first step is determining what your boundaries actually are. That might sound a little silly, but sometimes we can struggle to really articulate them. So I'd really encourage you to take a step back and to think through where your big rocks are. What are the things that are the most important to you? Are there certain days of the week that you would like to work or not work? Are there certain hours in your day that you want to set aside for work time? It's important to include your priorities. Are there certain things with your family that you never want to miss? Are you always there for family dinner? Do you need to be around to drop your kids off at school or pick them up afterwards? It's important to include this in the information that you're putting together here to establish your boundaries so that you know that those things are not going to be crossed. And this is going to look a little bit different for every person because all of our lives are a little bit different. As I said before, we all stepped into entrepreneurship for some type of freedom, and it's really important that we set boundaries that enable us to enjoy that and to be able to be present in the lives of the people that we care about and to show up for ourselves in our own lives in the way that we want to. When establishing my own boundaries, one thing that I found to be very helpful was actually to think back to previous client or customer relationships where I felt like my boundaries weren't being respected. That's oftentimes a really good way to start to indicate to me where those lines were that even if I wasn't aware of at the time, I felt there was some type of tension or friction that enabled me to not feel like I was fully stepping into the role that I wanted to in my business. So think back to those things and start to outline where those lines are for you that you're not okay with being crossed. Once you've had a chance to work through all of these things, your days and your times that you work in terms of turnaround time that clients and customers can expect for um, correspondence and for tasks being done, take the time to put together a how I work document that really outlines all of these things, makes it incredibly clear so there's no question going forward where it is that those guidelines are for you and your business. The second step is to actually tell everyone else what your boundaries actually are. And there's three important groups of people that need to be made aware of this. The first one is your family. Especially as a lot of us have transitioned to working remotely and completely working from home, it's really important that your family is on the same page with the schedule that you've set for yourself. Your family might need to know things like when you're starting during the day and when you're ending. Do you need really, really quiet time while you're on calls or doing particular types of deep work? Having those conversations with your family and with your partner help to ensure that you're able to continue on in a way that's sustainable. The second group of people that you need to notify are your clients. So obviously with new clients that are coming on, this is a little bit easier because you're just working to establish your working relationship. It's important that you make your boundaries very clear from the upstart, just so that they know going into the relationship exactly what they can expect and there's no unpleasant surprises down the road. For existing clients, this can be a little bit more complicated because you already have a pre-existing relationship with them and you'll need to decide how you want to handle this with the clients that you already have. It could be that they are grandfathered in and that you continue to serve them in the way that you always have. It could be that only your new clients are the ones that will have these new boundaries applied to them. It's just really important to remember that these boundaries are being put into place to ensure that you stay healthy and that you can keep doing the work that you're doing at the highest possible level for an extended period of time. And if you're heading towards burnout, there's probably some changes that need to be made to ensure that that doesn't happen. Whichever route you choose, just please remember that your boundaries are in place to protect you and to be able to serve your clients better and make sure that you're communicating that well throughout the process. The third group of people that you need to tell about your boundaries are your team, the people that work with you. It's really important for them to know how they can best reach you, um, what times of day you respond to messages and notifications, how they can get a hold of you in case of emergency, and what things actually constitute an emergency in your business. Setting these expectations with your team as soon as you have them in place will really help them to help you 
to be able to uphold these going forward. Which brings us to our third step in making sure that we're establishing these boundaries well in our business, and that's to actually uphold our boundaries. It's important to remember that you're the one who's responsible for this. If you don't uphold your stated boundaries, nobody else is going to do it for you. It's really important to make sure that you are doing this consistently and on an ongoing basis. So every time that those boundaries are pushed up against that you're willing to stand firm and to be able to point them back to the boundaries that you stated so that you can keep moving forward in a healthy way. That being said, there's always going to be circumstances where there are true emergencies. And the nice thing about having your boundaries stated is that you get to choose if you're willing to step over them or not. So let's say, for example, if you don't typically work on a Sunday and a client comes to you and there is an emergency that has come up that needs to be dealt with, you get to choose to either say, I'm sorry, I can't deal with this until Monday morning, or to step outside your boundaries as a one-off thing to be able to help them with whatever it is that's going on. If you choose the second option, it's really important that after you've served them and helped them in the best way that you possibly can, that you reiterate this was a one-time only thing and it was only because it was a very specific emergency. This allows you to step back into upholding your boundaries on a regular basis and making sure that it doesn't become something that's expected that you will do all the time at a drop of a hat. So remember, the most important thing about setting and upholding boundaries is that it will enable you to work in your business and to do the thing that you love for as long as you want to be able to do it. We want to make sure that your business is sustainable so that you can keep serving your people. And if you're not in a position to be able to serve them a couple of years from now, think of all of the people that will lose out and not get to have the joy and the privilege of working with you and your business to help them in their business or in their lives. So as a quick recap, we want to make sure that you can clearly articulate what your boundaries are, we want to make sure we tell the right people, and then ensure that you are upholding them on a regular basis. I love helping entrepreneurs build businesses that they love to work in, where they get to serve their people, where they get to use their talents and their gifts to be able to have an amazing impact. And the way that they can do this for a long period of time is making sure they're doing it in a sustainable way. And not only that, I want them to be able to love the lives that they're living as well as they're growing their businesses. And it's really important that those two things are in alignment so that you can continue to do this for many, many years to come. I hope that you found this helpful. I would love for you to drop a comment below letting me know what's one area of your business where you know you need to set some boundaries. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.